That NEC welcomes you to our instructional video series. This instructional video is for the 2016 to 2021 Toyota Prius Hybrid Battery Pack for module replacement and repair. You can also use this video as a guide to replace single modules with BATMEC replacement modules. This video is intended for highly trained individuals who understand the risks of working with high voltage. Risk includes loss of property or life. Repair at your own risk. Here's a look at our suggested personal protective equipment, or PPE. Your shop may have different protocols to keep you safe. It's always best to follow your shop's safety protocol. We recommend using high voltage gloves to protect you and then putting leather gloves over the high voltage gloves to protect the gloves. There are times during the disassembly where there is more risk of exposure to high voltage. So please be careful and wear your gloves when in doubt of your safety. This instructional video is for after you've removed the battery case from the vehicle. We recommend placing the battery case on a non-conductive work surface. Let's get started. Start by removing the nuts and screws that are used to attach the top metal case and top metal panels. Now that the screws are removed, you can proceed by removing the metal panel and top of the metal case, exposing the battery modules and components. Next, remove the black plastic wiring harness covers from this side. Now, proceed to the other side and remove the black plastic wiring harness covers from that side then, go ahead and remove all the nuts that attach the orange wiring harness to the battery modules from this side. Now, proceed to the other side and remove all the nuts that attach the orange wiring harness to the battery modules. Once the orange wiring harness is loose, go ahead and detach it from the battery modules. If you use a metal tool, such as a screwdriver, be careful not to touch multiple battery terminals at the same time, as you will most likely get a spark. Next, remove this black plastic cover. Then, remove this black plastic piece. Next, remove the temperature sensor wires from the top of the battery modules. Now you can unplug the temperature sensor wires from this end. Next, you'll go ahead and carefully flip the battery pack over. Once the pack is flipped over, proceed to unscrew all the screws that hold the case to the modules. Next, loosen this plastic piece from the metal case. Then, remove this screw, followed by removing the end metal panel. Now that the components are exposed, go ahead and remove these two screws and separate the components on this end. Next, remove the metal case by lifting it off the modules. Remove this black plastic piece from the battery pack. Now, note where these black buttons are on your battery pack. Stand the battery pack up with these black flat bolt ends down or on the bottom of the stack. At the top of the stack, you'll find the nuts to remove the white plastic end from the top of the battery stack. Go ahead and remove them. Next, remove the modules that you are replacing and set them aside. Remember, if your warranty agreement calls for the return of these modules, that you return them to BATMEC to ensure your warranty is kept valid. Now that the battery is completely disassembled, you can prepare to reassemble the battery. Carefully unpack your BATMEC boxes. Everything you need to rebuild your battery, including new bus bars and nuts, will be sent to you. Your BATMEC batteries are individually tested to assess leaks, capacity, voltage, and internal resistance. The highest and lowest capacities are arranged in ways to optimize the pack's performance and to optimize the differences in block voltage throughout the pack. Each pack is load tested at the same time, but BATMEC monitors the voltage of each individual module when testing. Packs are tested under a high current load. 
This is also a great time to suggest that you save the boxes you received from Batmech if you are returning your core. These make great core return boxes for shipping your old modules back to Batmech. Now, go ahead and stack the modules into the battery compression block. Note that the black buttons will remain at the bottom of your stack. The two wider posts should be in the front, facing toward you when you load the compression block. As you load the modules, the numbers should be upright and facing you. Number one will be inserted into the compression block first. Then, continue to stack modules sequentially up to number 28. When completed, the stack of modules should look like this. On the side without the handwritten numbers, the modules should rotate from negative to positive down the stack. If you have two positives or negatives on top of each other, you have the modules out of order. The same is true for the battery vents. The modules should rotate from vent to non-vent down the stack of modules. If you have two vents on top of each other, you have the modules out of order. Back to the other side of the module stack. If the numbering is out of order, you have the modules out of order. Notice at the top of the stack. On the left, the numbers are in order from 28 at the top all the way down to one at the bottom. On the same side, to the right of the stack, the module stack starts with a threaded hole at the top. The pattern for this should be a threaded hole to a non-threaded hole down the side. Of course, another thing to keep in mind is that the modules should be flush when stacked on top of each other. They should not look like the way they do here. Instead, they should be flush as they're shown here. This is achieved by making sure these interlocking tabs on the modules are lined up where they connect to another module. If your modules are staggered, this is because your modules are not stacked properly. Pay close attention not to make these mistakes. Now that the modules are stacked correctly and in the right order, you'll tighten down the bolts to the white plastic bookend, ensuring the modules stay snug in the compression block. Again, it's important that the modules are stacked correctly, as any error will cause your battery pack to fail immediately or soon thereafter. It will also void any warranty that may be available for your battery pack. Next, lay down the battery pack with the module threaded holes up. Then, reinsert this black plastic piece. Next, you can go ahead and put the metal case on top of the battery pack. Now that the metal case is on top of the battery pack, go ahead and use the Batmech supplied screws and attach the case to the modules, being careful not to over tighten the screws. Next, you'll reattach the components to this end. Then, reattach this metal end cover. Now, you'll go ahead and flip the case carefully back over. Next, go ahead and reattach the temperature sensor to the top of the battery, but don't forget to plug it in first. Now, attach these two black plastic end pieces to the battery pack. The next step you'll want to take is to replace all of your old, corroded bus bars. Batmech has supplied new bus bars with your battery pack purchase. The bus bars you are replacing are located within the orange wiring harnesses. This step is critical to ensure that the battery will work at peak performance and to ensure the battery won't fail now or in the near future due to corrosion on the bus bars. Be sure to take extra precautions not to break a terminal when removing or replacing bus bars. If you happen to break a terminal, never fear, Batmech.com sells replacement wiring harnesses for this model battery. After you've finished replacing the old bus bars with the new bus bars supplied by Batmech, you'll do the same replacement on the opposite side of the battery. For the other side of the orange wiring harness, this little plastic nub will need to be removed to fit the standard bus bars. This nub is unique to this generation of Toyota battery. Once the nubs have been notched out, you can replace and attach the Batmech supplied bus bars to the other side of the battery pack. The rest of the reassembly of the battery pack will re-energize the battery. Your shop may have different protocols to keep you safe. It's always best to follow your shop's safety protocol.
Before attaching the wire harness, be sure your torque settings on your torque wrench are set to about 55 inch-pounds. If you don't follow these torque settings, you are likely to damage the terminals on the modules and will void your warranty. Never use max drill settings and never use an impact wrench. Now that you have replaced your old bus bars with new ones, your next step is to attach the orange wiring harness to the battery modules using the Batmex supplied nuts. Now's a good time to take a photograph of each side of the battery. These photographs can be used for review of assembly if you experience issues. This may save you from having to uninstall the entire battery later. Once the wiring harness is properly attached and you've taken multiple pictures of the battery, reattach the black plastic wiring harness covers. Now you'll go to the opposite side of the battery and repeat the last few steps. Start on this side by attaching the orange wiring harness to the battery modules using the Batmex supplied nuts. Don't forget to attach these two essential eyelets to complete the circuit. Once the two essential eyelets have been attached along with the orange wire harness, go ahead and apply the nuts. Remember your torque settings. Now's a good time to take a photograph of each side of the battery. These photographs can be used for review of assembly if you experience issues. This may save you from having to uninstall the entire battery later. Now that you've attached the orange wiring harness and have taken multiple photos of the battery, reattach the black harness covers to the side. Finally, You'll put the metal case cover and metal side piece back on and attach them to the battery pack with the original nuts and bolts. Congratulations! You have completed the basic battery repair of your Toyota Prius. You may now reinstall the battery into the vehicle here are a few pro tips. Be sure the service plug is secured properly, otherwise you'll get error codes. You'll also want to clean your cabin filter every three months. Be sure to clean your cooling fan. Dirty cooling fans can cause the battery to overheat. This concludes our how-to demonstration. Remember as a highly skilled mechanic with high voltage training to wear the appropriate personal protection equipment your shop requires. Stay safe and thank you for shopping on batmech.com.